going to talk about an applications, a couple applications, okay? And um, using the calculator uh, to evaluate trip functions. Uh, primarily, where that's going to come in is, um, I mean, if you have funny angles, you're going to want to use your calculator. But also in helping you figure out what we just did in terms of that example where we're looking for the angle, that the calculator really comes in handy there. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about that today. So let's start off first of all looking at just a, using it to evaluate the trig functions. So the first one. Evaluate the sine of 68 degrees and 43 minutes. Uh, remember that there are 60 minutes in one degree. So really, I'm going to punch in the 68 degrees plus uh, 43 minutes. You can convert to degrees. Right? By dividing by the 60, that's one way. On the graphing calculators, there is um, a way to actually write it in as minutes if you want to. If you don't, then this would be what you want to punch in. If it's a type in as you as it reads, then really then you just go ahead and, and type in as I have it written there. If it's a reverse Polish notation where you apply the operation after you have the input value written in, then you would type in this and then hit your, the, the tangent button. Now the one thing you need to be careful of, um, there's another way to represent angles. Right now we're just dealing in degrees. Later on we'll talk about another way to represent them and those are called radians. Okay. So make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. And can somebody tell me what they got? And unless it's not, if it's not specified how far, off, how far to round off, I'm not going to be really picky just so that you round off accurately. Okay? Does that make sense? So if you decide to round to one decimal place, then just do it properly. Right. Okay, so somebody have a value? Five, six. Okay. And, or if you're going to round off to the second decimal place, then it should be seven. Okay. Anybody get a different answer? Anybody not able to get that answer? It's okay if you can't. That's what I'm here for. Okay. So I already punched at the AP. Okay, yeah, so you, um, you don't have to worry about degrees, just punching a number. It'll assume, if, if we get a different answer, then that means it's a number. Okay, and if you don't get, if you, uh, don't get the answer match back or something like that, you should always check the notes. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Then... Do the same thing with cosine of 193. <coughs> so, make a number.
anybody not able to get that answer? That would have been really bad to get a cosine value of that, right? Nine point seven, right? Because the oh, yeah. smallest can get is negative one. So, okay. All right. Now, how about this one? Cosecant of thirty-five point eight four seven one degrees. You have a cosecant button. It's the, um, you're thinking of reciprocal right off, right? Yeah. Okay, so it is the reciprocal, uh, but don't use that. If it's reciprocal, which one first? Uh, sine, right? So this is the same thing as saying 1 over sine of 35.8. Seven one degrees. Now you don't want to use the negative one exponent on the calculator because that has a different meaning. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is you can compute sine of thirty five point eight four seven one degrees, and then you can hit the one over x button. There should be a reciprocal button on the calculator. Or if you want to, you can take one divided by sine of 35.8471 degrees. If you don't have a calculator, make sure you look on, look on with somebody next to you. Maybe even ask them if you can if you can borrow it and, and punch it in. That people could do that. I'd appreciate it. Another way you can do it is, is you can raise whatever to the negative one power. Okay, is another way to do it. Okay, so what answer did people get? One point seven oh eight. One point seven oh eight. Okay. Anybody get a different answer? Anybody not able to get this answer? Okay. Then. See if you can figure out what secant of minus 287 degrees is on your top.
is it's the inverse function. So right now, if you take inverse cosine of negative 0.97, a different answer than that. Okay, so what the inverse cosine does is it does the reverses this process. So just like when you have um, <coughs> two cubed, so when you cube something, that gives you eight, but if you want to reverse the process and you took the cube root of eight, that would send you right back to two, right? So that's what the inverse true functions are when you have cosine to the negative one. So for example, if I took cosine to the negative one of 0 0.921185 what does it give you? 22.9 degrees, right? So this is when you're looking for the angle. You know the cosine value, you know the sine value, and you want to know what angle. This will send you back to one of the angles, right? If you remember that problem we worked, um, that was a sine problem where you're looking for the angle, we found more than one angle, right? Based on um, whether we are looking at a positive sine value, right? If this positive sine value would be either the first or second quadrant, the same reference angle works, right? Okay, so <coughs> this is going to give you essentially the reference angle. And then if you're asked to find all angles, um, for this, you could do the inverse cosine of both sides. That just gives you theta over here. And then punching that in there, you get the reference angle. You'd have to go find the other angles that that would work for as well, using that as the reference. Does that make sense? Okay. So, for example, if you were asked to find all angles theta, such that cosine theta is equal to 0 0.921185456. Um, also, we'll say beta in the interval 0 to 360. Okay? Because I don't want to have to find all of them. So just the ones from 0 to 360, okay? Then, essentially, you're taking inverse cosine of both sides, which just leaves you with theta here. And we already determined that that gives you 22.9 degrees, right? Okay? So cosine, though, is positive in two of the quadrants, right? This reference angle will give you this cosine value. So to find all of the <coughs> angles, I know that 22.9 works. What's going to be the other angle? Which other quadrant would have a cosine value that's positive? Fourth quadrant, right? And, and it has a reference angle 22.9 degrees. 
So if you're going to have a reference angle of 22.9 degrees, that's just a reference angle. What's this actual angle going to be? Okay, so so the other one would be the three thirty seven. Three thirty seven. That's right. Yeah, I was, I was gonna write it down here. Three hundred sixty degrees minus the twenty-two point nine, right? That's how you got it. So the other angle is Said seven point one. Is that right? Is that what you said? Okay. Yes, sir. I just want to ask. I've heard this term used before. I'm wondering if it's the same thing as this. What is arc sine? Yes. Cosine. That's the same thing as this. Yeah. Um, another word for cosine to the negative one is arc cosine. And we're going to talk more about this later. But we want to work some applications now. And since numbers in real life aren't pretty, we want to be able to find the angle. Okay. And it's not necessarily going to be 30, 60, 90, or 45. Okay? So we, we need to find the angle somehow. Any other questions on this? No? Okay. So let's do one more like this because there are the complications, once again, because you don't have an inverse tangent, sorry, an inverse secant or an inverse cosecant or an inverse cotangent button. So if I ask for you to, to uh, find theta, where cotangent theta is equal to 1.446474, how would you go about doing that? Because you can't just hit an inverse cotangent button, right? You don't have that on the calculator. So you have to turn this into an equation involving something that you can take the inverse of. So what would we convert this to? Tangent. So if cotangent theta equals this, then what would tangent theta equal? I think I'm hearing it whispered. One over that, right? So that means now all you have to do is figure out what that number is and then take the inverse tangent. So theta will be the inverse tangent of that number. <coughs>
So now let's look at a couple of applications. So how do how do the angles? Sorry, I don't know in the class, but how do the angles go to percentages like uh, like a six percent grade? What is that? That's angular. Six percent. Yeah, like that's how they put them. Like between here and Redoso, one of the roads it has a six percent grade, and that's how they put them on the signs. I would think that they're referring to an angle, not so much. A I percentage. Yeah. I think it's like uh, it drops like so many feet every. Yeah, that makes sense. Like the slope of it. Yeah. Steepness yeah, is a slope, but so six percent. So you're saying six percent of what? Yeah. I couldn't tell you the exact number. Yeah. I'll double check on that. That's a good question. Um, so. So let's see where this actually comes from. The book doesn't go into where it comes from. But the idea is, if, if I have an object, then um, the force of gravity is essentially the weight, right? So that's what's uh, pulling down on, on it. Now, um, the force that we're talking about here is the one in this direction, right? <coughs> so, if I draw... Essentially, it's a perpendicular to that. And then, since that's perpendicular to that, that means I have this angle here, right? And this is, this is the force. So if it's being pushed up, then it's a force working in that direction, pushing against it, okay? When we're talking about something going up, we consider theta to be positive. If it's coming downhill, theta is negative, okay? So uphill's positive angle. And then downhill is a negative angle. OK, 
Okay, so now if you look at um, what that means then is this angle right here and this angle right here make up 90 degrees, right? But also this angle and this angle make 90 degrees. Agree? You guys see that? So if this, these two together, because this is a perpendicular to the slope. So these are complementary angles. But since we're in a right triangle here as well, these are complementary angles. Does that make sense? So since there's this kind of overlap, that just means that this angle is the same as this angle, right? Because they're both complementary to the same angle. So this right here is theta as well. Remember, this is the weight due to gravity. So the force that I'm looking for is this side right here. Right? And that's the side that's opposite the angle. W is really the hypotenuse of the triangle there, right? So since I have something representing so this is the force that I'm looking for. So we're dealing with opposite and hypotenuse. So what, it, what trig function am I dealing with? Sine theta, right? So sine theta should be what? What's sine theta? By definition. Opposite over hypotenuse, right? So opposite in this case is? Right. And hypotenuse is W. So if you solve for F there, you get <coughs> F equals W sine theta. Okay? Although I don't quiz you on some of the stuff that I'm getting into, I don't want to just tell you to plug numbers into a formula without you knowing where they're coming from. Okay? So I will ask for you to use the formula. Right. So in this example, I want to find F for a 5,500-pound car that's traveling uphill So what do, what do we need to, uh, to do here? We know two of the values, right? We're just looking for F. So it's a matter of just substituting it. So the force is equal to, um, what did I say, W? It's 5,500. Sine of 3.9. Now, I think the answer in the back of the book in this section might be uh, going with 
significant figures. Um, so if you, if it rounds off at like 370, it's they're just one of the significant figures. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay. So we end up with a little bit of an answer. It's off. Don't panic. You can double check with me, but. Okay, then for B, this is for a 2,800-pound car um, traveling
And the reason this works is, um, let's say, here's the car. Let's the car. And it's traveling along. So essentially it's traveling in that direction. So the speed is the rate of change of this, right? Okay. So that's, um, I'm going to call this rate of change of this the actual speed. A for actual. Okay. And then there is a, a cop car. So here's the policeman. So this is actually um, the velocity that the, the radar gun is measuring, the rate of change of, of this. <coughs> So if I, and this is the angle, okay. so if I, um, I'm going to go here so I can get it perpendicular, if you draw a perpendicular to um, V sub R, then I want to figure out what A is based on B sub R. Okay? So that means that the actual velocity, I guess, let's call it B sub A, so keep the velocity. Which sides am I dealing with here now? Angle theta. This is the one that we would measure, and this is the one that we want to know. Right? So what's the relationship there? Which which truth function am I going to use? Cosine theta is, in general, it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? Section 2.3. 